Hi there, my name is Innocent Sadiki. I'm 30 years of age, and today I'm with my twin sister, Millicent Mashile. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is my twin sister. We are well known as the Saint Twins because our names end with Saint Millicent, Innocent, Saint. so Saint Twins. Not the Saint like the currency money, but yeah. Saint by God, sanctified. Um, Saint to love. Sent to care. Yeah, and yeah. sent to basically do what we love, to inspire others to also do what they love. So we grew up in Mamelodi in Pretoria, in Gauteng. Uh, we were raised by my grandparents, my grandmother, mm -hmm. Mary Chipa, as well as my grandfather, um, Uwans Chipa, who was a principal, and my grandmother was a teacher. And um, I would love to say we had like a wonderful beginning. Right. Yeah, we did. Interesting. Yeah. I think interesting, interesting beginning in that it was nothing ordinary. It was, yeah. it was very out of the ordinary and very different but special. I think anything that involves grandparents is very special. Yeah. And um, yeah, we're filled with a lot of love. We actually showered with a lot of love. And um, yeah, I think that happened most of our childhood. Yeah. So our grandparents are parents to my mother and not my dad. Um, our mom actually passed away when we were four. four yeah, four or five? Yeah, okay, mm, check that. Um, so she passed away when we were four and then my dad was never really part of our lives. Um, mm. My dad, you know, chose a different path in life and um, yeah, he was just never part of our journey, you know? Um, so yeah, mm. like I said, we were raised by our, our grandparents but the interesting thing, right, I have to say this about my dad. We really loved my dad yeah. a lot. And like our grandparents, especially my grandfather, would always be like, no, you guys should stop following this man. He's a dangerous man mm. and this and this. He doesn't love you. He doesn't want you, you know. Yeah. But like a funny story that we share is that there's, a one, there's one time where we sat together in the bedroom mm -hmm. and I said, Millicent, let's go look <laughs> for him. We're going to look for him and we're going to find him because we love him. We don't really mm -hmm. want this go where and could we have to say, but what's important is that we're going to find our dad. Yeah, and we found the gangster in us because he's like, yes, yeah, sir, <laughs> that guy. <laughs> <laughs> so we found that him in us decided to wake up very early in the morning, jump the gate. That happens a lot. But yeah, yeah. we jumped the gate. So my the dad had a lot of cameras, like in this room. <laughs> in his house. Surveillance, yeah. 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 And so he didn't want to open for us. And then the people in the street told us, no, your dad has cameras, so he can actually see you guys from the gate. So if he doesn't open, he doesn't want you. And we were like, what? He doesn't want who? We jumped the gate, went inside, went to all the windows. Go, 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 go. And we looked for him. Did he open? I can't remember. Yeah, he did. He did. Okay. He did eventually open because obviously nobody wants attention from the neighbors. So when yeah. he did eventually open, we got in, he went to go buy us food and then he begged us to leave. <laughs> and that was the end of our relationship in like 30 minutes. Lived very short. But yeah, he bought us our first phones a couple of years <laughs> later. <laughs> What did they call him? I'm like, I can't remember what it was. It was Nick, but we went Nick. just after Menlane Mall just opened and we went to game. And he's like, I'm going to buy you guys phones. He collected us from home. He hired a driver because he didn't like driving. And then we went to Menlane Mall. He bought us phones, took us back home. He probably didn't know how to drive. He yeah. probably didn't know us either. So, because he he was just like, what was he even calling us? Weird. But anyway, that's his loss because obviously, you know, we only saw him probably in total a few days of our lives. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but um, I think hence I said in the beginning that having grandparents is, is really a beautiful blessing. You know, like really losing our mother at like four years old was really like something that we had to. How can I say we had to adjust life, you know, and I think if you don't have a support system, if you don't have love, you will never be able to live life after that, you know, in a way where you are fulfilled mm. and happy and sort of have a normal childhood. And content. Yes. And the most important part also we had each other. I think yes. if it was what do they yeah. call like single people who don't have a twin sisters? Because we're twins and then 
Okay. Know, yeah, singles. people who don't have sisters or brothers or twin sisters. Mm -hmm. I don't know what they're called. But I don't know how they do it because we had each other to lean on. We had each mm -hmm. other to cry about things, to laugh about things. And our childhood, because we're together, was very interesting. I think God sort of planned this whole twin thing. Oh, yes. So my mom was the only girl out of mm -hmm. seven boys. So my grandparents just had like... Boys, boys, boys. Boys, boys, boys. And the only most beautiful mm -hmm. girl that they had, God decided to take her. And mm. But God is so amazing. Instead of one, God brought the two of us, mm -hmm. you know, and I think that was incredible. Yeah. <laughs> we had very interesting, <laughs> we had a very interesting childhood in that we're always very creative. We're always very outspoken, very loud, mm. um, dramatic. Very dramatic. Yeah. One more than the other. Yes, you know, and I think my sister was obviously more dramatic. No, I was not going to say that. <laughs> I was going to say you are more dramatic. Anyway, who's on SOP now? <laughs> anyway, so uh, my sister was just very dramatic, and I was like the strict sister. Um, but I think what I, I love more about our childhood is that we're just so artistic. Like, we used to get kids from the neighborhood, like, guys, come to our house. We even used to bath kids. Eh? We're like, if you didn't bath, we're going to pour water for you in the bathtub. You're going to bath before you play with us. And then after that, you'd be like audition people, we'd do plays, we'd do all these things. Yeah. So that was very interesting. Um, and I think that's why the community of Imami Lodi and Pretoria, when they see us on television now, they're like, yeah. yeah. It was meant to be. It was yeah. meant to be because we're always those girls. And I remember I always told my sister that, you know, if we're watching people in America on Days of Our Lives, I yeah. think people in America are watching us. So you must be careful what you're doing because you don't know. People are watching you somewhere in the world. Yeah. Because obviously I didn't understand how television works and how it streams and stuff. But I was like the more talented twin sister. Wow. <laughs> 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 what? I'm so <laughs> She's never heard that before. I can't believe it. I'm so <laughs> Wait, wait. <laughs> it's so hot here. <laughs> I can't believe it. How did no one ever tell her? <laughs> <laughs> wait, are you I thought you were going to say, um, I was a pretty one, but you know, but I was always the talented one. Like, it's not No, but at least you were the pretty one. I was the fat twin, believe it or not. No. I was huge. Like, I had weight problems, guys. <laughs> so, what made you talented? <laughs> See, my makeup's gonna smudge now. No, anyway. but I think just to clear the air, I've always been the talented <laughs> twin and I've always been the pretty twin. Uh, I know things are uh, changing as we grow, but you know, it's always <laughs> been like that. So, you know, so wait, hold on. I, I need to help you with this because you're okay. phrasing your words wrong. I was more creative and you more structured in terms of taking my creativity and putting it on paper. Well, and we made a good match. So I think that works out fine. And you're a perfectionist, and I'm more like a creative mind, and a, you know, like I'm out there, and I'm like, let's do this. And then you like more, the person says, let's implement, you know, let's. Okay, well, she's trying to convince herself, but it's no. fine. I'm going to support my sister. She's very talented, you know, but yeah. And I actually got into the industry first. Yeah. And what happened? I got into, what do you mean what happened? I got into the industry first, you know, and then I like, girl, wake up, come home. Because my sister was getting into, in, into the corporate space. Um, but anyway, yeah, so fast forward to us liking things when we were young. So we, we were going to the shops and then we heard like loud music and drums and people singing. And it was a church, funny enough. Yeah. Um, and we walked in, we're so, we're so young. We're so young, yeah. Faith mission, yeah. yeah. Um, Apostolic faith, faith mission. mission. Yes. Mamilodi. Mamilodi. And then we, um, we got in because we actually grew up in a Catholic church we're going to a very strict Catholic church. Yeah. And then we're like, yo, there's this church. They dance, they sing. It's so nice when I go to that church. And I don't know how, but my grandparents were like, go. 
yeah. you guys can join that church. And from there onwards, we joined the Catholic Church. And I think that actually protected us. Ooh, it protected us from a lot of, um, a lot of craziness that could mm. have happened. Because with the yeah. kind of energy that we had, yeah. without church or yes. without God, I, I fear to know what was yeah. going to happen. And also, they, they allowed us to dream. They allowed us to be ourselves. They, they allowed us to, you know, to speak about what we wanted to do. And I remember, you know, just going to church, we wanted to pursue television more than ever or radio, mm -hmm. whatever the case might be. I remember we had like um, a radio, you know, those small black radios. I don't know what they were called then. And we used to record a lot of shows. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of show concept yeah. from radio to television to Everything. theater. We've like written, written, written. And I remember we used to record, yeah. right? We had a show called when we were teenagers, it was twins and, and teen stuff. stuff. And then, and then we had, yeah, I don't know, a lot. there are a lot. All we do, all we do is like, it's, it's search on the search engine on Gmail, show concept, and a hundred shows will literally come up. But we used to record ourselves. Yeah. Going back to that. And with the tapes and all the shows, we're like, hi, my name is Innocent Sadiki. Da, 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 da. Oh, yeah. I was cheaper then. Yeah. And it's a mil um, we We're both cheaper, cheaper then. Yeah. And so we'd record all of these shows in our room. And every morning, I remember my star would say, Practice makes perfect, so we have to practice. So we'd literally sit in front of the mirror, which belonged to my mom. So we never changed my mom's furniture. So it's we still took, there. yeah, we took over my mom's room, Very but then special. we didn't change anything. The only thing like that we change is the bed. Yeah, yeah. Everything else is still Everything there. Everything else is still there. So we'd sit on that mirror and we'd literally be presenting every day, we'd be like yeah. wah, 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 wah. one show after the yeah. other, you know. So that was our childhood. If we're mm. not writing something on paper, we're recording something. If it's not that, we're taking auditions. And my grandma didn't even know what an audition is. She didn't even know what a play is. Every December, would call all cousins. our cousins, all our relatives. Give them cousins. You, baby Jesus. You, the old yeah. Jesus. You, Joseph. You, John. Yes. And, and we'd just rehearse like this. for like a good two weeks or so, school holidays. And then on Christmas or New Year's, we'd call all our neighbors and everybody to come and watch a play. And everybody would watch what we did and they would clap hands and would yeah. cut clothes, remember? Yeah, yeah, we're very creative, you know, yeah. we're like, we're extremely creative. We so fire. yeah, before we even knew that this is actually an actual career. Yeah. But here's the, another thing that really drove us, that my grandmother kept reminding us of, that we auditioned actually when we were like four years old, just before my mom passed. And we got a job on kids' television channel. And it was for like kids presenting. So when they phoned the following week, no one could take us to Joburg because my mom wasn't there anymore. And my grandmother was devastated. And she was like, oh my gosh, do you think that you guys auditioned and you guys got this job? But that was the end of the industry. But somehow we had that at the back of our yeah. heads. Which this is meant to be. So years later, and I mean years later, when we got into the industry, Oh, and like, okay, not got into the industry because we got in before because we started with stage before television. So when she finally saw us on television, she was in tears. She couldn't believe it. She, she was, was like, in I tears. Can't believe like the almost dream. 20 years ago, you guys auditioned, got yes. a job, and no one could take you to Joburg, yeah. to the SABC, and yeah. now you guys are finally on television. Yeah, and also, you know, my grandmother was still healing from, from obviously the loss of her daughter, and just the whole thing was just so traumatic for them and. Somehow nobody had been to Joburg. Yeah, I'm like, okay, Coco, could you not find a neighbor or something? It's like nobody knew jo where Joburg was, and these people just said, get to a studio somewhere in Joburg. We want these girls and want them to present the show. So, you know, again, what Millicent said. Every time I think my, my grandmother doesn't get used to seeing us on television. Yeah, no, she doesn't. She can't be. She's like, okay, how is it possible that you ended up where your mom wanted you? You know? Yeah. To end up, you it's know, very interesting. and with that call that I could never. Yeah, you know. but even with that said, I mean, it was really hard getting into the industry. It still is because, I mean, we set goals and there are things that we really want to achieve within the industry. And for me, yo, geez, the, this entertainment industry has really tested me. So many times I felt like giving up. So many times I was like, listen, I'm going to look for an 8 to 5 job. I can't do this. Especially after you start a family and then you have kids and you have bills to pay. Yeah. And then you have a gig this month and then you don't have a gig that month. Mm -hmm. It's moments like that that remind you that this is a calling. I literally can't give up on it because there's just so much that we have been through. But we used to and like, wait. we used to spend 50 Rand going to Joburg and 
we used to catch up. I mean, like Pretoria was far from Jobek. Somehow now it's Listen, closer. The money is nothing. Drive. <laughs> but jo Jobek was like a country, I know. a different country. <laughs> so like going from and fifty rand was a lot of money. So we used to have fifty rand, and my grooms were like, "Okay, this is fifty rand. This is it." From one taxi to another, and then we get to Joburg, and then we get lost, and then we get to the audition when the audition no. is over. Then we beg to audition, and then we're wearing the wrong clothes because we had a bad agent. Oh, you don't even have a brief. They just tell you get to the audition. You don't even have a brief for the audition. Growing up, ne, as teenagers, <laughs> was um, was awkward because teens don't like church. Teens don't like church. There's so yeah. many things happening. And I think, you know, being in the school that we're in, people and parties, how like clubbing house and parties. house parties. I think the, the, we used to do sleepovers, but in terms of house parties and all these things, it was just something that we never sort of related to much. And we sort of never fit into that space. Yeah. And um, yeah. But somehow would have wild friends and would always be surrounded by and you were crazy attracted people. by wild friends. Or no. But you yeah, I mean crazy friends. I understand I'm good with people. Like I'm really good people. I don't attract people that are like me. I attract people who are like complete opposites and my sister will be like, What's this? Mm, what must happen now? Equally yoked with unbelievers. So um <laughs> anyway. So, yeah, so I think, you know, we're, we're surrounded by, we knew exactly what our peers were doing at 18. We knew exactly, I mean, yeah. like at 18, everyone was getting boyfriends and having sex and whatever. But I think for us, we, it, it was a thing. We were like, yo, I think our church was very strict as well, hey? Yeah. Like our church was very strict. Like you can't even talk about boys. You can't even stand with boys. Nothing. So for us, just having boyfriends, it was just a taboo, honestly. Like yeah. I went into varsity and I was like the only virgin, honestly. On my first I think day. It's also crazy. What, what we had, what I think we had, is the fear of God. I think I don't know what gospel they preached to us. But they traumatized. Or with <laughs> Jesus they preached to us. But like, there was no boy who's going to break that, you know, covenant that we had confessed. Yeah. Or, you know, and I call it vows that we, we, we created with God. There was absolutely no one that could convince us we could be sitting in mm. maybe like a friend's party who invited us and everyone would be drinking and people would be smoking and people would be like with their boyfriends and two people are dancing and we would like. be those awkward people who are sitting like <laughs> <laughs> yeah those boring people in the corner and everybody just mm. can't wait for you to go home but we're not boring though we did fit in we just didn't yeah. do what everybody else did yeah. You know, I think that's what sort of set us apart. You know, we're not a church 24 7, seven days a week, but you know, we would have normal lives with normal people. And yeah. I think another thing also, growing up in Mami Lodi, there was this whole um, Makinza phrase and taxi driver phrase where everyone's just dating either a Makinza or a Taxi driver. Yeah. There was just that syndrome going on in yeah, the air. You get to sit in the front seat. And listen. <laughs> Wait, I don't get that, you know, <laughs> but it used to be a big thing. It used to I be a promise thing. it used to be like a thing, you know. So, yeah, so during that phrase where everyone was dating taxi drivers, Namakinza, and all these guys who were driving, um, we were like, yeah, we were just afraid of men and boys and all these yeah. things. And somehow, every time a taxi driver used to just like wait before us. Hoods or just a fully window at Sawana was sissy. Yo, we used to run for our lives. Basic <laughs> kitchen and foot. And I think somehow we developed early. So, like, we were very curvy somehow, you know, at a very young age. We just had clear, like, a clear curviness to us. And somehow men were just like, you. So it was a thing, Jay. Just that attention we did not need it, we did not yeah. want it. And we used to run. And that helped us because, mm. you know, everyone was just like, and not that, I mean, which girl doesn't want to be spoiled and all these things. And you know, grandparents don't spoil you. Grandparents give you what you need, mm. not what you want. And clearly these guys were giving these girls what they wanted. So I'm glad that we had that discipline. You know, we yeah. had that, you know, that strong foundation of guys, your time will come and you cannot do things that are mm. outside your principles or what you believe in. I think it's exactly that. What um, 
been Christians gave us as principles and morals and values. So I, I don't think without church or without Christ or without Jesus or without even being saved, we would have been as grounded as we were. I remember we used to literally pray about everything. I, I even now, I don't think I fast as much as we fasted Yo, when we were yeah. still in school. We had a, 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 mm -hmm. a friend of ours, her name was Utuarelo, and she didn't stay so far from her house. So we went to the same church, and we grew up there, and we went mm -hmm. to the same school as well, the same yeah. high school. So we used to go to Tarlo's house, like some mm -hmm. Fridays, and some Fridays she would come to our house. Yeah. So this is what we do. We would choose dates where we would be fasting. Yeah. And we would say, we're going to be praying the whole night. It, that was our lifestyle. And somehow, I look at it today, I'm like, how is it a burden for people to fast? How is it a burden for people to pray for the whole night? How is it a burden for people, you know, to And how to do Bible too study? young? Because we were like very, And very how young. are people too young? We used to freak my grandmother out, right? Because we would be in the bedroom and we, we Tina Notarelo and I, like, we'd invite some of our friends and we would take turns in, t mm. in terms of who, who's going to preach and who's mm. going to do what. I remember, I don't know what we were praying about, right? And we've, uh, like for me personally, I've always uh, been like very prophetic, you know, and I've, I've just always been able to see things in the spirit and I've always just had a very strong discerning spirit. And so we would pray so much and then we'd share what, what we see in the spirit or what we feel or what, what mm. we're discerning. And that used to be like the most powerful yeah. instances ever, yeah. you know. Um, so this was us in high school. Yeah. So when everybody does everything at school, we'd be planning, we'd say, we're going to pray about this. Yeah. We used to pray about the industry and say, we cursed, not cursed necessarily, yeah. but we felt like we need to break chains. You yes. know, we felt like yes. the, there must be some sort of breakthrough in our lives and it was just not happening. And we asked ourselves, but what are we doing yeah. wrong, you know? For um, years and years. I mean, for it years. Like, it, I mean, you question your talent, you question your confidence. You, you question God because you're like, mm. but if this is meant to be, why is it not happening? Yeah. You know? So it felt like there's something in the spirit that's literally, like there's something that is standing in between us and achieving our dreams. Because why? We went to go study television, you studied, you, you know, you go to auditions, mm. you fit the part, but you just never get it. We'd always be those girls who are like, get the job. You are like this close, close to getting the job. It's always like that. Yeah, you would audition and you get to the top, whatever, top, whatever. And when you're like this close, right there, then you mm. don't get it. It was always like that. And I said to my sister, Nati Mili, there's something we need to pray. And that has always been the prayer. We have to break whatever thing, you know, whatever is stopping us. I don't know what it is, you know, in the spirit. But yeah, that's what we've always believed in. And I think the thing is broken. Right? Yeah, mm -hmm. and we got saved on the same day. I remember we literally walked to the, to the front of the church together to mm -hmm. go and accept Jesus. We were baptized on the same day. When we were baptized, there was a, a guy in church who said, after you get baptized, if you die now, you're going to go to, to heaven, heaven. <laughs> because all your sins are forgiven. I and remember my sister was like, when I got out of that today, pool, I was Samba. like, come take me. <laughs> Can a car bump me? Or oh, like, I've never wanted to die so badly because I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to go to heaven because that's how badly we wanted to go to heaven. That's how badly we love God. But at, you know, when I think about it, at the end of it all, I think it was just love. We just love God so much. We, yeah. you know, yes, we were tested. Yes, you know, you're going you're gonna to get that cute guy, okay, who is just like, irresistible who just smells yeah. good right and who just has the right tone and everything but the love of jesus mm -mm -mm. Yeah. like you like you know what i mean yeah and look temptations were there you know challenges were there and mm. like you said so many times you felt like giving up but the love of god like even now yeah. i feel like i still have it like the way i felt about god a then M. yeah even now I, i'm like god i wanna you know, I, I want to connect like in that way. I want to have that genuine, innocent, fearless love that I, I had when mm. nothing else matters, where nothing, it was not influenced by anything, but it was just so pure. It was just so beautiful mm. that everything else for me, I was like, it's not worth it. 
you know yeah. all my life i said i want to get married to a pastor because i felt like i don't see myself anywhere else but within the presence of god because that's how good it was and then she married the craziest guy on earth my brother-in-law but he's special and then years later he became a pastor believe it or not and yeah, I still now don't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> but now I um, fundis, so i think yeah for us we found our husbands very interesting enough in the same, same church. church yeah and were they friends yes no Not really but they they, they, they knew, knew each, each other. other yes so i think for me that story is always so interesting that we went to go visit a church, a church and then here was this Dark-skinned guys minding yeah. their own business. Clearly, they were not minding it. And I it. promise you, when I saw my husband, I was like, ooh, ooh, Lord. he talks too much. <laughs> he is too dark. And somehow, he liked us so much, like, because he would just talk to us, you know, because he was working in television, so he was just first with this girls who want to be on TV. So he was just like, okay, I'm going to chama them because oh, somehow I think that worked. Why am I married? So probably it works. But anyway, at that time, he came and was like, yo, they want to be on TV. I'm going to tell them I work on TV, this, this, this. He just yeah. said a whole lot of things. And I remember walking out of there, I'm like, I never want to see that guy again, you know. <laughs> and, and I don't know, a few years later, yeah, they were married. <laughs> he had a plan. He had a yeah. strategy. He had a plan. But I'm glad we married to God-fearing men as well because it also keeps us grounded. Yeah. I can't imagine seeing my sister unhappy or in a space where she loses that relationship with God. So it is important for us to marry men who love God. You know, Pastor Second, Leo. And eh? especially in this but industry. How many times have you been on set and you like, thank God I'm married? Yeah. Right? Because the, the I don't know how to call it, right? Because this industry has its own buzz and feel and excitement yeah. and like there's just and so somehow much that's happening people forget that they're married when yeah they're on sets. yeah and I, I feel like if you weren't every director or producer or whatever they still ask you out even when you're married but can you imagine if you were not married it's <laughs> just like I'm listen like, I sometimes can tell i have my husband I'm like, Thank you, you saved me i we have you actually we me. have lost so many jobs because of that yeah. actually yeah I think one thing about this industry is that you get to a point where you're very desperate because there's so many of you and, you know, I think at the time for us, very few jobs. And so what happens is that a lot of directors and producers and creators and everybody else who, who's got superior power of some sort feel like they've got the upper hand and feel like, you know what, I can give you a job, but be friendly to me, advantage. you know. They yeah. take advantage. The, the, there's always been that vibe, you know. Mm. You know, you girls, you know, I can do this for you. I can do that. They've got all of these promises. And I feel like at every single point, it mm. was a matter of that bub coming on and where you like, thank God I've got Jesus. Yeah. Thank God I am saved. saved because... Yeah. You would just go for it because you'd be like, oh, I'm going to get this great opportunity. Yeah, I need you know? money for my car. I need this. You know, there's so much to consider. But I find that um, now we're still going through the exact same thing. Like whether mm. you're married or not, nobody cares. Whether you're Christian or not, no one cares. Whether you talk about God and said, they clearly, don't care. like no one cares. You know, people will still ask you out. People will still want your numbers. And people will still cancel your contract because you don't want to sleep with them. That yeah. is the reality that we're living with today. You know, and yeah. for me, it, it's 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 really like, you know, a testimony when we get jobs genuinely because yes. I'm like, then it's our responsibility as authentic people, genuine people, people who have principles and morals to end such things within the industry and to also remember, you know what, guys, you can't go out there and claim what you love God and claim what you are saved, yet you behave in a certain way. Mm. You know, I think for us, your actions, actions, it keeps us and, grounded. Yeah, and I always felt that if God truly has opened these doors, um, I'm always going to get a job because God wants me to get it. I remember very clearly when I went to, to the edition of the soap I am currently in. I remember praying and saying, God, you're going to walk with me. And I'm um, sitting on a couch. Mm. This was like the second round audition. You know, all these big people in the industry were sitting on that couch. And I remember just doing like a short prayer. And I said, Holy Spirit, I'm going to walk in with you because my steps are ordered by you. And I could literally feel good. I'm not walking alone. Like, I'm, mm. I'm, I'm with someone. You know mm. how the Bible says, I'll never leave you, not forsake you. Mm. At that point, I could feel it and I knew it that mm. I am not alone. And I remember auditioning and in that room, it just felt like 
there's so much of the presence of God, whether or not those people knew God or they didn't know God. But I walked out of there and I told my sister, this one is mine. Because somehow I felt like, God, you, you went and then you sealed the deal. All I had to do was just to wait and be present in that room. And I was there and you did the rest. Yeah. And so, and I think we've been very blessed because with yeah. all of our jobs, we prayed for it. You know, um, we, we prayed for it, both me and myself, very prayerful and would fast about things and would believe in them. So it's more of a spiritual engagement yeah. and, and really working hard as well because also sometimes people think I can just pray and get yes. things, you know. I think part of believing in God is believing in the principle of hard work yes. and Amen. putting in the work and mm. saying, God, if you truly believe that I'm a good presenter, I'm going to go and study, I'm going to go and put in the work, I'm going to go do some research, I'm going to do this, you know. So it's just a combination of everything and discipline, discipline, discipline. I think church will discipline you. Yes. Church will discipline you a lot. And I think in this industry, you need discipline because somehow when people get on set, they forget morals and discipline. It's like, because I don't know, maybe because we're artistic beings, Jay, I'm about to be transformed to characters, you know? So yeah. it's, it's so important for you to never, ever forget who you are, even when people are losing who they are. Yeah. So with everything that happens in the industry, the good and the bad, the ups and the downs, you know, and how everybody sort of forgets who they are, I think what really, really kept us grounded is the fact that we are saved and the fact that we are principled and we love God and we never, ever forgot who we are. Absolutely. And I think the grace and favor of God is always more than sufficient. I think each and every door that is open for us would have never opened had it not been mm. for the grace of God. Each and every opportunity that we got, it would have never happened had it not been for the grace of God. Mm. Each and every, you know, relationship that we have and all the relationships that we've been built, yes. I think they've been ordained by God. And I truly believe that. And where we are today is exactly where God wants us to be. Absolutely. And every single struggle and every single pain and hurt that we've been through, everything happened for a reason because yeah. now we appreciate everything so much more. And Absolutely. we have a testament to say, we didn't just walk out and you get the jobs. No, we were mm -hmm. tested. You know, there were trials and tribulations. But the word of God says, take heed, I have overcome the world. And this is who we are today because of the mm. grace and unbelievable love of God. And yeah. That's how we say it. And I'm Melissa Mashile. And I'm Innocent Sadiki. We are the Saint Twins. And thank God we, we are saved. saved. <laughs> By the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. And cut. <sighs>